Hey guys, this is a Uniswap tutorial updated because now you can trade on Uniswap with a few different networks, including Arbitrum, Optimism, and Polygon. You want to use those networks because they're cheaper to use, lower gas fees, you don't have to trade on the Ethereum mainnet. So in this video, we're going to look at getting a MetaMask wallet set up, going through Uniswap, um, and then using those networks to trade. I'll show you absolutely everything. Timestamps for all of that are in the video description, along with some other links and helpful resources to everything I mentioned in this video. First thing we need to do is get a MetaMask set up. So come to metamask.io. You can download this um, on your smartphone, but really you want it on Chrome browser or any of the other supported browsers. So come, click download, add that to your Chrome. It's gonna come in as an extension. Um, so you can just set up an account. I'm not gonna go through the account setup in this video. If you want to know how to do that, you don't have a MetaMask yet, I'll leave that video in the description. You can see step by step. But very quickly to go through the MetaMask setup, when you download, it will ask you to um, either set up a new wallet or to load a previous wallet. Obviously, if you have a previous wallet, you don't need to watch this part of the video, but you can set up a new wallet as well. And then it will take you through to this screen, which is a 12 word recovery phrase. You're gonna to have to write this recovery phrase down, keep it somewhere extremely safe when you're setting up your MetaMask. These words are essentially like the password to your wallet. So anyone that has these can load your wallet on a different computer and access the wallet. So once you have MetaMask set up, we can go to Uniswap and then actually get started. So what you can do is come straight to Uniswap and then add some of the networks into MetaMask that you're gonna be needing. So we're gonna go through adding uh, Arbitrum and Polygon uh, to MetaMask itself and actually Uniswap does this for us. So if you come to Uniswap itself and just click launch app, what you'll see is up in the top right hand corner, um, you won't be connected so you won't see your wallet address here, but you will see the available networks that you can add. Right now, I'm on the Ethereum mainnet, but you, you can add Polygon, Optimism, and Arbitrum. So what you're gonna to want to do with your MetaMask once that's set up, and once your MetaMask is set up, it should look like this. Obviously, it might not have um, any funds in there, which we'll get onto in a second. Um, but really what you need to do is add some extra networks as well. If you want to trade on the Ethereum mainnet, you're right here and you just need some funds in your account, which I'll go over in a second. But if you want to trade on the other networks that are now supported on Uniswap, including Polygon, Optimism, and Arbitrum, you'll have to add them into your MetaMask account. Very easily, all you have to do is click on this and then click on the network that you want to use. So for example, if I choose Arbitrum, it's gonna go through to my MetaMask account that I have set up, and in the bottom it says Switch Network. If you don't have any of these networks in your MetaMask account set up yet, then what it will do is say, do you want to add the network yourself? You can say yes, and then all of the network parameters will be added into your MetaMask for you. I'm just gonna click on Switch. You can see it switches right to Arbitrum. So if I go back to my MetaMask, what you can see is I'm now in the Arbitrum uh, area of my MetaMask. So this is a different network, but you have the same MetaMask account and you actually have the same uh, wallet address as well, but you're using a different network. You can see I don't have any assets on this network. If I switch back now to Ethereum, you can see it will now show me the assets that I have on the Ethereum mainnet. If for some reason you can't add those networks to your MetaMask through Uniswap automatically, you can do it manually as well. So I'm gonna show you that very quickly. You just search in Google how to add Arbitrum to MetaMask and it will come up with um, the Medium article. Um, so we can come down here and see the parameters that we need. If we come down, here they are, right? So you have these parameters that you need to put in. I'm gonna come back over to my MetaMask uh, right here and then I'm gonna come up to the section on networks and I'm gonna click add network. You then have this information here, network name, chain ID, um, and the URL that you have to put in. Come back to the article. This is what you need to put in. So copy and paste that right in. And it's the same for Polygon as well. You can add Polygon to your MetaMask. You can just come down, find the information that you need. Here it is, Polygon 137 Matic. Come over to your MetaMask, click Add Network, put that in, click Save, and then come back to your main page, and you should be able to see all of the different networks that you have in your MetaMask. You can see I've got Arbitrum here, Phantom, Matic, and a few others. So that is how you add networks to your MetaMask, and then you can go ahead um, and start connecting them up with Uniswap. Next thing is you're gonna need some assets in your MetaMask account. There's two ways to do this, either buying directly in MetaMask or just going to an exchange and buying it there and then transferring it in. I'll very quickly show you both of those options. Come into MetaMask, 
If you're in the Ethereum mainnet, you can click buy like this, and it's gonna take you through to one of these service providers. These are third party service providers. They'll charge you a few percent. You pay with a card. You can go through just like buying something on Amazon. It's quite expensive though. What I would suggest is using something like Binance to get some coins and then transferring it over. So you can use Binance or crypto.com or whatever. I'll leave the links to them if you need to get started with these. It's gonna be a cheaper way overall. So when you're withdrawing from an exchange, and if you don't know how to do that, I'll leave those videos in the description, tutorials on how to use exchanges. What we need to do is make sure we choose the right network. So if you're on Ethereum, what you'll need to do is transfer Ethereum out. You can see I've got Ethereum right here and I can transfer that out. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my MetaMask, click copy on my address, come over to Binance, paste that address in here and then select the network. Now Binance actually support uh, two networks for Ethereum, you have the Ethereum mainnet, you can see down here, ERC20, it's gonna cost about $20. That's the Ethereum mainnet ETH, that's the, you know, the main uh, Ethereum mainnet, so that's gonna be way more expensive. They also now support Arbitrum, which is that layer two solution that you can also use with Uniswap. You can see the fee here is about $10, so half price, and Arbitrum is cheaper than Ethereum mainnet for Uniswap as well. So if you wanna use layer two, you don't have to do any bridging or anything like that. You can withdraw it straight into your Arbitrum account, which is the same network address, your MetaMask address, and use Arbitrum directly, get it onto layer two, and then use Arbitrum with Uniswap. Also, what I want to show you is um, using Matic as well. So you can't withdraw Ethereum from Binance over the Matic network. It might be different for different exchanges, but if you go to something like USDT, which you might wanna use a US dollar stable coin, um, you can see the network supported. You can use Ethereum mainnet, but you can't use Arbitrum and you can't use Polygon Matic network either. So what you'll have to do is basically um, withdraw Polygon Matic. You can see the network right here is Polygon Matic. So you can go over, um, switch to your, your Matic mainnet like this, click copy. It's actually the same address, so you don't need to switch the network. But then what we can do is uh, come and paste that address in, choose the Matic network. Then we have Matic in our uh, Polygon address in MetaMask that we can swap on Uniswap. So depending on which network you use, that would be the best option to withdraw from an exchange into one of your network wallets. If you have an ETH in your Ethereum mainnet wallet already, then you're gonna to have to bridge that over to one of the other chains that you want to use with Uniswap. So to very quickly show you that, you can come to the Arbitrum One bridge, link up your, um, your MetaMask on Ethereum mainnet, and then you can bridge that over to Arbitrum on layer two. Very simply, um, it will notice that you have your MetaMask set up with coins in there. You can just come down to deposit like this. So enter an amount, 0.02, something like that, click deposit. That will take about 15 minutes to go from ETH layer one and deposit that ETH in your Arbitrum layer two account. You have to pay Ethereum gas fees for this, which is very expensive. But if you have ETH in your account, in your MetaMask account already, there's really no other option. If you want to bridge ETH over to Polygon, you can also do it. What you have to do is use the Polygon bridge. So come to Polygon wallet um, and then choose the Polygon bridge, link up your MetaMask. You can see I have my MetaMask account in the top right hand corner. It's going to bridge over ETH over to ETH on Polygon. I'm not gonna go through the steps for this because I've got other specific videos on this. I'll link those in the description, but that is hopefully every single way to get ETH from your mainnet or your exchange over to the different networks. Now we can actually come and navigate the Uniswap system. So I'll just show you this. Because there are different networks now, liquidity is not the same. It changes per network, right? So there's still more liquidity on the Ethereum mainnet than there is on Arbitrum layer two and on Polygon. It's different and we can have a look. So when we come into the, Oli uh, the Uniswap app, you can come over to charts right here and you can see I'm in the Ethereum mainnet. So there's $4 billion in uh, liquidity. Uh, trading volume in the last 24 hours is 1.81 billion. You can come and down and see the most liquid assets right here, um, just as an overview. You can also change this, for example, to Arbitrum, and it's going to change, right? So the amount of liquidity and value being traded right here is different, 
and the coins that are popular and being traded are different as well. So just to be sure, if you have a very illiquid coin that you wanna trade, you may still have to trade that on the Ethereum mainnet and pay the higher fees. For very liquid coins, you can see USD coin, you know, wrapped Bitcoin, they're gonna have decent liquidity on all the networks, but just check as well. So if I go to Polygon, it's gonna be different again. The supported coins, the most liquid coins, are going to be different. So just check really what network that you want to use and which coins have very good liquidity because if there's not enough liquidity, you're going to get a worse price for your trade. I'm going to show you how to swap coins on Uniswap now. So just come to the app itself and then come to swap. Make sure that you're on the network that you want. So in the top right hand corner, if your wallet is not here, just click up here to connect. It will take you through to connect MetaMask. You can connect it. Make sure that you're on the network that you want to trade on. I'm going to show you on Polygon. You can see I've got a, a very small balance of Matic in my account right here, which it automatically shows you. So if we zoom in, you can see uh, I've got five Matic. So to very easily swap from one coin to another, type in the amount that you want to swap. Um, and then obviously the token that you want to swap into. You can see the most traded assets here. Um, obviously, you know, wrapped ETH and some stable coins and wrapped Bitcoin are gonna be the most liquid pairs. So to swap it into, for example, USDC, you can just click that um, and then it will show you basically the swap price. So one Matic at the moment is worth around $2. So if you sell Matic, then that will buy around $2 of USDC. If we come down, you can obviously see the exchange rate here and the amount of fees. So I'm actually gonna just um, put this down. So what we can see is auto router. You'll probably want to have this on. This is going to route your order through the cheapest way. So there might be different routes that the order can take, different applications, different trading pairs to give you the cheapest price. So I would just leave this on auto router. But if you come down, you can see basically it's going through Polygon V3 and just a simple swap. There are other swaps that may route through different um, exchanges even or different trading pairs. So just leave it on auto, you'll probably get the best price. If we come up to the settings here, you can see the slippage tolerance is on auto, which is actually quite high right now, about 3%. I would suggest leaving this on auto because the system knows how much slippage there's gonna be. Slippage is essentially, you can see the um, it's unfavorable price movement. So slippage is when you trade, the price that you see when you actually press trade, and then the price that the, the trade actually happens at may be a little bit different. If you don't want it to be different, then set your slippage tolerance very low. If you want the trade to go through and really want it to go through, set your slippage tolerance a little bit higher. I would just suggest um, setting it on auto, especially on Polygon and Arbitrum. There's gonna be quite a quick trade, quite a cheap trade, so there's no point kind of waiting a long time. Transaction deadline, 30 minutes is fine. Auto router, I said on is fine. Also expert mode. If you turn this on, you won't have to confirm with your MetaMask wallet when you trade. So when you confirm and press trade, um, there is a, a box that comes up to the right hand side with MetaMask and it says, do you want to confirm this transaction? You press yes and go through that. If you press expert mode, when you press trade, it's not gonna come up with that confirmation. So it's gonna be a little bit quicker to go through if you wanna have that on. So when you click, when you click swap right here, it will swap this amount and the price is obviously all confirmed. When you press swap on the right hand side, your MetaMask will come up. You'll have to pay gas fees. On Matic and Arbitrum, it's gonna be cheaper. On the Ethereum mainnet, you're gonna be paying a lot, lot more. So when that comes up, just press confirm, pay the gas fee, and then that's what will happen. Um, and that will go through into your MetaMask account. With Uniswap V3, the latest upgrade, they've also added and um, upgraded the uh, pool feature if you want to add liquidity and earn some trading fees. So if you have a couple of tokens like Matic and USDT, you can supply these to the liquidity pools and earn trading fees back. So you're known as an LP or a liquidity provider. I'm gonna very quickly show you how to do this. So you come, you come up the top to pool, um, and then you obviously need two tokens to add to the pools. So the first thing is to select a pair. I'm gonna show you this on the Polygon network. It's gonna be different on the other networks. Um, and the, the pools are gonna be different sizes. But you can see here, you have Matic and USDT. You're gonna need both of those coins to add into the liquidity pool to start earning trading fees from traders that actually use the pool. So down here, you can see the 0.05 fee tier. If we edit this, you have three options. You have 0.05, 0.3, and 1%. 1% is when you actually earn more money, 
but that's usually reserved for what they call more exotic pairs, basically much smaller coins that don't have a lot of liquidity. People expect to pay a little bit more in trading fees for those coins. If you have two very actively traded coins or um, you know large liquidity pools, then obviously the competition dictates that the trading fees will be lower. So what Uniswap recommend is that for very liquid pairs, for example, um, two stable coins, and they're very solid in their price, right? So USDC and USDT are both US dollar stable coins, so they're both gonna have a dollar value within a very tight range at all times. So people are not gonna pay a lot of money to trade that, and so that's uh, that's what would be chosen, 0.05. If you want a little bit um, kind of more, more exotic pair, you, you charge a bit more, but the system will basically auto select this for you. You can actually see that 69% of people choose this fee tier, so it's gonna automatically choose this fee. You're gonna to have to be competitive with the amount that you're charging. So what you can do is basically click on your deposit amounts. Um, so click how much Matic in this example that you wanna deposit, and it's gonna choose for you how much USDT you need to deposit because you need to deposit them in a set ratio. Something different on V3 Uniswap as well is the ability to choose the range or the price range in which you supply your tokens. So there's many things to think about here when you supply liquidity. Something called impermanent loss is something to think about. Um, and I'm not gonna go through the implications of that in this video. Um, just, just to kind of uh, touch on this as well, if you want to learn more about uh, supplying liquidity, earning yield, yield farming, and everything like that, I have an entire DeFi section in my crypto course. It goes through impermanent loss, um, supplying liquidity, some of the things to think about, um, how to know, you know how much you can earn and everything like that. I have an entire section in my course. I'll link that in the description. Uh, the course is like 150 videos. We have private Discord groups where we discuss this sort of thing. So if you want to learn more about that, um, you know, definitely check that out. But just to very simply go over it, what we can see here in Uniswap V3 is that you can supply your liquidity in a set price range. What this will do is basically concentrate your liquidity in this price range. If the price range of the two assets moves outside, basically what you do is stop earning trading fees and start accumulating one of the assets, depending on you know, how the price moves. What this does is actually um, reduce some of the potential loss that you get from what's called impermanent loss. So you can concentrate your liquidity in a range right here. So why this would work is if you had two, um, two stable coins like USDT and USDC, they're both gonna trade at a dollar. So you don't need to put your liquidity out on the range of prices. You know that they're gonna trade in a very tight range the whole time. So you can put all of your liquidity in that tight range. For other coins that may have a different range, you may wanna widen your range a little bit, but you can stop it at say 10% or 15% out, and then obviously reduce your impermanent loss if the price really moves outside of that range. But when it does, you stop earning fees. So you have to keep that in mind. You can basically edit this like this, um, you can edit the, the range that you concentrate your liquidity in um, and then it will do it for you. You can also edit this over time as well, take liquidity out and put it back in, edit the range that you want to uh, earn your trading fees in. Also with LP tokens, Uniswap in previous versions, when you added two assets into a liquidity pool, they gave you a token back called an LP token. This would represent your ownership of the pool and then when you withdraw your assets, you get your LP tokens back. That doesn't happen anymore because this is all down to the user, meaning that um, not each liquidity provider is the same anymore. Everyone is specific to their own um, parameters. And so what you actually get when you supply liquidity into a pool is not an LP token, but now you get an NFT, a non-fungible token. LP tokens are fungible tokens. NFTs obviously are unique. That's because your parameters are unique to you. When you do this and you supply liquidity, what will happen? You have to go through this transaction. You'll get an NFT, and then when you want to when you want to withdraw your liquidity from the pool, you will have to swap in that NFT and get your liquidity back. Like I said, it's a little bit complex. If you do want to know more about supplying liquidity, liquidity pools, how to earn money from yield farming and everything like that, I have an entire DeFi section in my course. You know, we have investing everything uh, else, so you can check that out at moneyzg.academy. Um, come and join us in our private Discord groups as well. I'm James with Money ZG. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.